gracious father in heaven i ask that even as i speak your word that you grant me the privilege and the boldness to speak and that everyone who hears will be blessed and that the name of the lord jesus christ will be glorified have your way in this place holy spirit do not let us live the same way that we came and let your name be exalted in jesus name amen praise the name of the lord hallelujah praise god please open with me to the book of zechariah chapter 1 the book of zechariah chapter 1 we're reading from verses 16 to 21. Zechariah chapter 1 from verses 16 to 21. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Are we all there? Praise God. Um, it's on the screen as well. So perhaps if you don't have your Bibles here, you could also join us to read. Hallelujah. Let's read together one to go. Therefore, thus says the Lord... I am returning to Jerusalem with mercy. My house shall be built in it, says the Lord of hosts, and a surveyor's line shall be stretched out over Jerusalem. Again, proclaim, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, My cities shall again spread out through prosperity. The Lord will again comfort Zion and will again choose Jerusalem. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and there were four horns. And I said to the angel who talked with me, What are these? So he answered me, These are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen, and I said, What are these coming to do? So he said, These are the horns that scattered Judah, so that no one can lift up his head. But the craftsmen are coming to terrify them, to cast out the horns of the nations that lifted up their horn against the land of Judah to scatter it. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Uh, the title of my sermon this morning is Break Forth. It's consistent with the theme of the month, privilege, um, as the Holy Spirit will grant utterance, I'll be making known what the Lord has laid on my heart concerning this subject. Praise God. And so perhaps today is your very first time in the place of victory. What we love to do as inspired by the Holy Spirit is to steal our months as per what God would have us look into. One of the things that gave me delight is the fact that for many of us who were here last week Sunday when the shit conference was coming to an end, the man of God who was preaching touched on this topic and not that I told him anything or not that he saw it, but it was for me, it was a confirmation that truly this is what God will have us look into. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so when we go back to the anchor text that we read, the Bible says, this was prophet Zechariah speaking concerning God's mind concerning his people. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says that Zechariah said that thus says the Lord, I am returning to Jerusalem with mercy. And it says, my house shall be built in it, says the Lord of hosts, and the surveyor's line shall stretch out over Jerusalem. In other words, it was a time of expansion. It was a time for increase. The Bible says that God even said that my cities shall again spread out through prosperity. The Lord will again comfort Zion and will again choose Jerusalem. Now, when you read this passage, you will expect that as it continued, the good news will continue. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But I noticed something different. That at the moment, the Bible says that then I raised my eyes and looked. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible said that what? There were four horns. And the essence of these four horns was to ensure that God's idea did not come to pass. Praise the name of the Lord. Because the Bible says, when you read the verse 21, it says, And I said, what are these coming to do? And so he said that these are the horns that scattered Judah, so that what? No one can lift up his head. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It would be naive of you, as a matter of fact, when I was growing up, um, I used to have my aunties say oh you know what a handsome boy what a nice boy he is and for some reason by the reason of them saying those words to my ears i began to assume that no evil will happen to me praise the name of the lord and so you understand that you'll be naive to assume that maybe because you're good looking 
that evil is not supposed to touch you or perhaps the enemy is not supposed to be against you. Why? Because your good looks justifies why the enemy should not even come near you. And so for those of us who are not good looking, like me, praise God, you will assume that, oh, it's us that the enemy likes. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But the Bible says that, well, that there were four horns who ensured that what no man did lift up his head. Hallelujah. And so you understand that God's idea when it comes to breaking forth is an idea that he established to bring about the increase of the saints. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because from the dictionary, you, I tried to examine what, the, what both words meant. And the dictionary said that when you're talking about break, you're talking about a separate or a cause to separate into pieces as a result of a blow, shock, or strain. In other words, when it comes to breaking, there must be an element of force. Hallelujah. Things don't just break. Praise the name of the Lord. There must be what? An element of force. And force, the other word, says that what? It is to go out or away from a starting point. In other words, when the Bible says that the path of the just man is the path that shines brighter and brighter onto a more perfect day. In other words, by design, God's idea is that when you look back, you must have made significant progress from where you were yesterday to where you are currently. And so perhaps that is not your reality. I want to tell you that your life is contrary to God's idea. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is why there must be a breaking forth. Hallelujah. For example, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, it says, because we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses. Hebrews 12 verse 1. It says, therefore, let us lay aside every weight, every sin that does easily beset us. Because it is only then we can run the race that is set before us. Praise the name of the Lord. Because as a matter of fact, I've never seen in the Olympics where somebody was running to set a record that was carrying weight. Praise the name of the Lord. As a matter of fact, they will endeavor to do what? They dress as light as possible. Why? Because anything, every weight on their body at the time of the race matters. And for you, and for you child of God, our heavenly race, this kingdom race that we are on, Everything matters, even to the tiniest of details. Praise the name of the Lord. I remember when I was in secondary school, there was a popular secular artist then, by, named by Aliyah. I was a fan of her music then, so don't think I was always like this uh, growing up. Uh, praise God. And, and it was said that the reason why the plane crashed was because they carried more weight than the plane could carry. Praise the name of the Lord. And so you realize that as a believer, when you begin to carry more weight than your destiny is designed to carry, there is automatically going to be what? A crash. Praise God. And that is why we must break forth that anything limiting me from being what God has called me to be, that it just must live my life. Praise the name of the Lord. Because my, the essence of my living here on the earth is to ensure that I capture everything God has embedded within my spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so the anchor text for the month in Isaiah, it was saying, Sing, O barren women, that thou who, who do not bear, it says, break forth into singing. Cry aloud that thou dost not travel with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, says the Lord. And it says, enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitations. He says, spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes, for thou shalt break forth on the right and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Now he says, fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither shalt thou be confounded. My focus is on verse 5. He says, for though thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood. Why was this? It says, because for thy master, the new King James says that for your husband is what? The Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole the whole earth 
is what he shall be called. Hallelujah. You know, this passage was talking about the story of the people of Israel when they left captivity from Babylon coming back to Jerusalem. Praise God. In other words, they had lost everything that they had. They had nothing to their name, but God was saying that what, because I am your husband, praise God, that the essence of what I will do is that I will bring you to a place where you would have more than what you lost. Praise the name of the You should what? Look at the wife. And so for many of us, who perhaps you're not taking care of your wife, it's a reflection of who you are. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Why? Because we see it here that he said that the reason why I would do all this is because what? Thy master is thy husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. Praise the name of the Lord. And so you realize that the, despite this precious promise that God has given us, we understand that we live in a wicked world. Hallelujah. Like we saw in the anchor text that we read, it said that there were four horns who ensured that no man dare lift his head. Have there been times when you tried to do certain things, but everything you did did not seem to work? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. They are horns speaking against your progress. Hallelujah. Have there been times when you made moves, everything you planned based on strategy, on paper, it made sense. There, it was foolproof. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, for us, uh, for those of us who are in business, you do what we call a risk assessment. And when you assess all the risks, there is nothing telling you that this thing will not work. But the moment you venture into that particular thing, you realize that what there seems to be no tangible result or the other. The Bible said that what these are the horns that scatter Judah, that no one dare what lift up his head. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And so you realize that because of the world that we live in, and this is one thing that I would love to teach us this morning. You see, for you as a believer, to assume that things just happen is a very naive way to live your life. Praise God. I want you to look at every single thing that happens to your life from today from the lens of the Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Even down to when something perches on your head. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Things don't just happen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because you see, when you read the Bible, the book of Psalm 91 verse 5, the Bible says that what? You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrows that fly by day. Arrows don't just fly. Somebody shot it. There must be an archer. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so you realize that life is very, very spiritual. Praise God. I shared it here sometime in, in the past. It was a new year. And I saw it on Instagram. And I was really blessed by it. These young guys, they were going for a business project or a proposal meeting. I don't want to say, oh, this is what goes in the back room. And, and after they have made all their plans, all they began to do was to pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Why? Because they understood that if I don't settle things in the spirit, there is a horn that will ensure that I don't lift my head. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so you realize that things don't just happen. Praise God. They are what made to happen, whether positive or negative. Praise the name of the Lord. Things don't just happen. Praise God. That somebody woke up and started speaking wrongly against you, it did not just happen. Praise God. You were in good terms with your boss. All of a sudden, you, talk, you come to work the next day. It looks like all hell broke loose. Things don't just happen. Praise the name of the Lord. Because if they did, just check. There must always be something looming around that is coming into your life that the enemy would always want to use to dissuade us from certain things. As a matter of fact, you understand how wicked this world is. I was speaking to someone yesterday, and he said that, you know, growing up, their mom, for some mystery, every time she sleeps on the bed, she's very, very sick. Praise God. But when she sleeps on the floor, she's fine. Praise the name of the Lord. Things don't happen. Praise God. Things don't just happen. I heard of a testimony of somebody who was in a dream and someone hit something on their head. They woke up and it was perpetual headache. No amount of 
paracetamol or Tylenol that you could take that would subside that headache. Things don't just happen. Life is very spiritual. Praise the name of the Lord. And so when you understand the concept of breaking forth, there must be a warfare. Before the Pharaoh could let the of Israel go, you knew the contention that happened when you read the Bible. Praise God. Because no evil one would let you go just like that. There must be what a force to break forth. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says in Galatians 5 verse 25, Paul was speaking and he said that if we are believers, now live what? If we are living now by the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, if we are living now by the Holy Spirit's power, he says, let us follow the Holy Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Praise God. Because it would be naive for you to only pray about certain things and leave the rest to chance. Praise God. So, for example, when you wake up in the morning, now, don't tell me it's too spiritual. Holy Spirit, what should I wear today? Praise God. I'll give you a story. Someone was going for an interview and prayed the same prayer. And he was led to wear a red tie. He was going for an interview. Only for him to get to the interview and red was the favorite color of the interviewer. Praise the name of the Lord. Things don't just happen. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why he said that if we are, in this, if we are led by the Spirit, let us what therefore live by the Spirit. That the Holy Spirit would guide us, even in parenting. I remember a lady who shared a testimony that she had a dream that her daughter was naked. Now, when you read that dream, when you hear that, that dream, you wonder what could that mean? She knew that her daughter was exposed to something. And she began to probe the daughter, the young girl. I think the story was that old that she had been giving herself to pornography. Praise the name of the Lord. What if the mother was not discerning to know these things? Praise the name of the Lord. Things don't just what happen. Hallelujah. And so you realize that even Paul, as powerful as Paul was, Paul says that therefore we wanted to come to you time and time again. He says, but what? Satan hindered us. Praise God. Anytime you want to make progress, and it doesn't seem to work. Don't just take things lightly. Yes, here we make jokes and say, oh, I make several job applications and I keep getting unfortunately, 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 unfortunately. Don't assume that as your status quo. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because there is a hindrance. Praise God. Paul says that for what I tarry to come to you, to Ephesus. I said I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost. He says for a great and effectual door has been opened unto me. But nonetheless, what, what? There are many adversaries. Don't take life too casually. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. As a matter of fact, a man of God that I highly respect, he says that what you don't want, you don't watch. What you cannot confront, you cannot conquer. And what you don't resist has a right to remain. So what is remaining in your life? Praise God. Because what you don't want, you don't watch it. You don't pamper it. Praise God. What you don't want, you don't watch. He says what you ever, you, you, you don't resist has what? A right to remain. Praise the name of the Lord. And so, in dealing with breaking forth, you must understand that in the things of the spirit, there is no middle ground. Praise God. Spirituality is not gray. It's either black or white. Praise the name of the Lord. There is what? No middle ground. Jesus today, the world tomorrow, it cannot work. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You are either for God or you are for the devil, either consciously or unconsciously. Praise God. I say unconscious because for those who believe, oh, I'm an atheist, there's a spirit behind it. Praise the name of the Lord. There is a spirit behind it. The Bible said that what? That for the eyes of this world have what? Have been made blind because if they receive the gospel, they'll be, they'll be saved. Hallelujah. And so you realize that what? It's either God is in charge of your life or you have allowed Satan to take charge, whether you permitted him or not. Praise God. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so you know, majority of the battles we face as believers, they have a spiritual undertone. And if that be the case, we must be conversant with warfare. Praise God. We must be what? Conversant with warfare. So quickly, how then do we break forth? How do we break forth? How do we break forth? The Bible says in Romans 8 from verse 1 to 2, it says that what? That there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Number two, it says for the law of the spirit of life has what? Broken me free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Because when it comes to the aspect of breaking forth, praise God, they are setting laws. Praise the name of the Lord. They are what? Setting laws that must be... What are laws? Laws are rules that govern the outcomes of my life and your life. Praise the name of the Lord. If you choose to neglect those laws, you'll be a victim to them. If you choose to apply them, you would get the result that is being said. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I remember a man of God said that what success makes the future... says principles rather. Principles make the future predictable. Praise God. Quite recently, the Lord have been dealing with me about trusting the process. There is a process for every given result you want. And should you choose not to align to those processes, you would fall victim otherwise. Praise God. So what are these laws of the Spirit? So all throughout this month, by the grace of God, we'll be dealing with this law of the Spirit one by one in every Sunday. Praise the name of the Lord. What are the laws of the Spirit? These are laws that you and I, anything that the Holy Spirit will bring to our consciousness that would help us to live a life of victory. One of them is what? The law of light and revelation. Praise the name of the Lord. The law of what? Light and revelation. You cannot walk in darkness if you don't have light. Isaiah says that what? Arise and shine for what? Your light has come. Praise the name of the Lord. It says gross darkness would cover the people. But the glory or the light of God is what you need to navigate through darkness. You will agree that the world is getting darker by the minute. Praise the name of the Lord. It's getting darker and darker by the minute. And unfortunately, our children are the target. Praise God. Because when you have ungodly children, obviously, godliness will be a thing of the past. Praise God. Because they are the future of tomorrow. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The law of light and revelation. So what is this law of light and revelation? Isaiah chapter 9 from verse 1 to 4, as we begin to round up. Isaiah chapter 9 from verses 1 to 4. It says, And when at first... He lightly esteemed the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, and afterward more heavily oppressed her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the Gentiles. He says, the people who walked in darkness have what? Seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, he says, upon them light has what? Shined. In other words, if we are going to break forth, it's about asking the Lord, open my eyes to see. Praise the name of the Lord. Open what? My eyes to see. Because you see, what you are able to behold is what God is capable of doing. I've said it here before, Jeremiah 1 verse 5 and 6. The Lord said to Jeremiah, he says, what do you see? He says, I see an almond tree. And God said, that you have seen well, therefore... I will perform what I have said. When I mean revelation, that particular thing that you are going through is to begin to ask the Lord, Lord, what is the mystery behind this thing? Why am I going through this? There must be a reason. Because what? When there is darkness, you only leave darkness when you have light. Praise the name of the Lord. You are able to escape darkness when you are a custodian of what? Light. The Bible says here that what? The people who walked in darkness, they have seen a great light. 
those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a great light have shone. And what happened after the light? It says, you have then multiplied the nations and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of the harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. It says, for you have broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, in the day of the Midian. Hallelujah. It takes light, it takes revelation, insight concerning a particular thing. And that revelation must be based on scripture. In other words, Lord, what is your word concerning this issue? It could be your health. It could be your career. It could be your marriage. It could be your children. Regardless of anything, like we read in Galatians 5 verse 25, it says, if we are living by the Holy Spirit's power, let us therefore allow the Holy Spirit to lead us in every aspect of our lives. Praise God. There is a, an answer to every question you will have. If only you and I are willing to pay the price for the information. Praise God. Look at what the Job, Job said as, as I round up. We know what Job went through. The affliction he went through in scripture. The Bible said that what? At one point in time, he was the richest man in the east. He did not, he ensured evil. He was a righteous man. And all of a sudden, something happened. But the Bible says in the 29th of verse 3 to 4, he began to reminisce. And he said that when his scandal shined upon my head, he says when his light, by his light, I walked through what? Darkness. Praise the name of the Lord. By his light, I walked through darkness. The psalmist said that what? Your word is a light unto what? My path and a lamp unto my feet. Praise the name of the Lord. This is why you and I, in this month of breaking forth, we can't be casual about the things that we don't want in our lives. Praise God. Because by reason of covenant, whatever we Whatever God brings to our attention is an indication that God wants to deal with that problem. Praise the name of the Lord. Whatever God brings to your attention is an indication that God is willing to deal with that problem. And if only we would allow him to do his work, he would break us forth in the name of Jesus. Therefore, let us bow our heads and begin to pray. And begin to ask the Lord to grant you grace. You see, it takes the grace of God. When you are angry in the spirit, you are able to deal with certain issues. The Bible said that Jacob said, that Isaac said to Jacob, or to Esau, that when you become restless, only then shall his yoke be broken out of your neck. Therefore, begin to pray and say, Father, that Lord, I receive grace, O God to do what I need to do to break forth in this season. That whatever I don't want in my life, that Lord, I receive the grace to settle this in the place of prayer. That whatever you begin to reveal to me, the instructions, the obedience that I need, that Lord, you would grant unto me in the name of Jesus. That Lord, I will not end the month of June with the same issues. I will not end the month of June with the same story. That Lord, you said that you are going to what? Break us forth. That Lord, in the name of Jesus, you will help us to break forth, oh God. That your name be glorified in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, oh God, in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. One of the things that we must come to terms with the fact that, like I said earlier on, in the things of the spirit, there is no middle ground. So it's either you deliberately choose God or you unconsciously choose the enemy. And this afternoon or this morning, I want to give us an opportunity that perhaps you don't have it right with Jesus. In other words, you acknowledge that Jesus is not your Lord. Or perhaps you were in a good relationship in the past, but for some reason you lost your way like, like the prodigal son. Today is that day of opportunity. Like I said, things don't just happen. God made it possible for you to be here today. And if you're one of those, just say with me, Lord Jesus. Say, come into my life today. Say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Say, cleanse me with your blood. 
I acknowledge that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. And on the third day, you rose again. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Grant me the privilege to walk in the realities of the new creation. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you.